I really wish adding passkeys to my application was this easy when I was working on this stuff, although they, they didn't even exist yet, but whatever, let's get started. Welcome to Passkeys 101, a series where I'll tell you all the things you need to know about passkeys in an easier and hopefully digestible way. So let's take a look at how to add passkeys to your web application using Auth0. For the sake of this video, I'm assuming you've probably already worked with Auth0 and you're just looking to know how to add passkeys. I have here a Ruby on Rails web application that has been integrated with Auth0, but now I want to have passkeys enabled. So all the things that you need to take care of when working with Auth0, like dealing with, in the case of Ruby on Rails, you need to deal with the callback function and all that stuff, that has already been done. And I'm gonna show you what my application looks like. Let me run my server and open this here. This is my application is, is very simple. It's a page where you can see your profile and do stuff with your passkeys. So if I go to sign up right now, for example, you'll see I have a login box with an email and password and a social login with Google, but nothing else. So there's nothing about passkeys just yet. Let's go ahead and go to Auth0. This is a newly created tenant, but like I said, I've already created an Auth0 application for my regular web application, which is in Rails. We're going to go to Authentications in the sidebar, then Database, and then we're going to click on the name of the database connection. In our case, it's going to be Username and Password Authentication, and then we're going to go to the Authentication Methods tab. So a passkey for Auth0 is another authentication method, just like a password would be, for example. And you see here that it's not enabled right now. So if I try to enable it right now, I get some sort of like warning saying like, there's a few things you need to do before you can actually perform this. And most of them, they're already done. Just bear in mind, this is a new tenant that I just created. So these were done by default, but if they're not, if they're pending like this one right here, you need to go ahead and actually comply to this one. The one that I have pending is using identifier first login flow must be enabled. So if we go over here and we try to sign up, you'll see that I have two fields, one for my email address and one for my password. What Ozero is asking us to do in order to have passkeys enabled is in this initial screen, you only need to see the email address or the identifier. So we're going to click there and that's going to take us to authentication profile here under the authentication section. And this is what we have right now. We have identifier and password and we want to have identifier first. So if I click on that, you'll see on the right end that this graphic changes. And what it basically says is we're going to prompt you with your identifier first and then if necessary, we're going to prompt you for your password or we're going to take you to a passwordless alternative. So that's what we want in the case of passkeys. So I'm going to click on save and proceed. If I go back here and try to sign up again, you'll see that I only get my email address prompted. So at this point, we haven't enabled passkeys yet. So if I happen to want to create a new user here and I click continue, I am going to be prompted for my password because right now I don't have any other authentication method enabled. I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to go back so I can show you how or like what this would look like with passkeys. So once again, we're going to go to our database connection and we're going to click on it and go to the authentication methods tab and we're going to enable passkeys. So we go over there and it says that it might take up to 30 seconds, but let's take a look to see if we have it already. If I try to sign in and get like sign up again and I click continue. Okay. So the changes were applied. So now instead of me being, you know, redirected to enter my password, I am now allowed to create a passkey instead. So I'm going to go ahead and create this passkey and you'll see this whole flow is happening already with the browser. So I'm going to create this passkey in my Chrome profile, for example, click continue. Now I have to interact with my authenticator, which in this case is my laptop. So I'm going to touch the fingerprint reader. And then this is not related to passkeys, but more to what my, my application is doing, which is I, I need access to the user's profile to show some information. 
And if I click accept, accept, I'm gonna land in the user's profile and I have some information here. So my application has a list of passkeys and I can click here and you'll see, oh, you have one passkey here, it's a device bound passkey and it has this information, I can revoke them, you know. But yeah, that's pretty much in everything you need to do in order to have passkeys for your users. There are some things you can do in your application if you want. For example, in this particular application of mine, I'm storing some information about the passkey. So the type of passkey, the key ID, the public key, I can store that info. Maybe the, the ID from out zero, you can make those changes in your application if you need to, but it's not really necessary unless you're actually gonna use that information. For example, if I try to log in now and not sign up, I already have this new button here, continue with a passkey. If I click on it, I can create, I can authenticate with my previously created passkey. And it doesn't really matter what stack you're working on. What matters is that you are able to integrate with Altzira. And then once you have Altzira integrated into your application, all you need to do is to change some configuration in your Altzira dashboard. And that's pretty much it. Let me know if you like this video. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.